John, good to see you again. Alex, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I sir. I was just saying backstage, I can't believe in all the years that I've been going to political things, making jokes about politics, I haven't met you. I've been hiding in the shadows. Yeah. Just waiting for this moment. That's usually where I hang out, too, though. I'm surprised. <laughs> now, let me just get to the elephant in the room. Uh, the last time you guys were here, you were a guy, okay? Mm -hmm. You were Mark Halperin, okay? Who lost all of his jobs after being accused of sexual harassment. Quick question for John. Did you think that was the end of the circus? Like, th that was it, because you guys were identified as, as along with Mark uh, McKinnon as, as being the show. Yeah, so, I mean, Donald Trump's the president, right? Sure. So it... That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought there was some question about whether in 2018 anything would be allowed on television besides, like, uh, Hannity and... and... <laughs> and the Fox morning show, like mm -hmm. that everything else would be banned. So sure. I, you can't predict the future at this point, right? Mm -hmm. But what I thought was that the show, the strength of it is the show. Like the circus is a, a unique way of covering politics. We've got, we do this real time documentary every week. We start on Monday, we shoot for a week, we put it on the air on Sunday and the show and its approach to politics is bigger than any of the individuals who are on it. Mm -hmm. I believe that really strongly and given the level of interest in politics right now, given the stakes that the country's facing, I kind of hoped that Showtime would be willing to stick with the show, and they were. Well, real-time documentary, um, uh, I, on, you know, we used to call that TV news, a real-time documentary, because <laughs> that's what TV news is it's every day. It's all real. It's all real every day. Um, how do you guys, like, how do you respond to what's going on in the news right now? Because we are not news, but every day we talk about what's happening in the national conversation, and sometimes at 4 o'clock we have to change everything for that night's show. You guys are creating a documentary every week. What happens on Monday by Sunday night? Is it Sundays? Sunday nights so at 8 p.m., but Sunday nights at 8 p.m. On Sunday nights, uh, you're like, wait, who can remember what happened on Monday? But that's exactly the point of the circus, right? I mean, there are mental breakdowns on the part of former Trump administration officials that happen through the week. There are people hired, fired, hired, fired again. You need something at the end of the week that distills what the hell just happened and mm -hmm. puts it all in per into perspective. Which I is have exactly something what that's the distilled says. at the end of the week. It's bourbon. Yes. Well, listen. <laughs> that's what puts everything and, in perspective. And, that, for and me. that's largely what, what fuels us in the Saturday night edit of everything that just happened. In the Do you past think week. it's going to be all Trump, or is there any other big story in Washington, or has he swallowed every other story? In the 30 years I've been doing this, he's the most dominant uh, of all the presidents. Presidents always dominate political news, but sure. he has swallowed everything. He swallows, he's, he's, he permeates all of uh, popular culture. He's, everybody in the country is obsessed with Donald Trump, whether they love him or they hate him. So is there another story? Yeah, there's Bob Mueller, who's the other unlikely person, not an elected official, but a guy who now kind of bestrides the political world like a colossus because he is the person who could end Donald Trump. And, you know, I never thought, I've covered a lot of special prosecutors, I never thought we'd have one where people buy, like, Mueller time t-shirts on Amazon. <laughs> but he's become a popular cultural hero. So, yeah, there's another huge story. It's the story of whether Trump survives as president, and Mueller embodies that. And then, of course, there's the Democratic resistance. So there's a lot else to cover. How about Stormy Daniels? Um, is, does that story matter? Well, yeah, I think it matters in the sense that, you know, we've, she's done something no one else has ever done before, which is shut up Donald Trump. I mean, every Donald Trump. When someone attacks Donald Trump, he always says he's a counterpuncher. He ten fight, times as hard. Ten times as hard. He's a, apart from some legal machinations. He's not attacked her on Twitter. He's not denied anything she said. He's not gone to war with her. There was a period of time for about four or five days where he disappeared completely. Had no public schedule in the face of uh, Stormy Daniels and her lawyer. So clearly, Donald Trump is worried about what might happen if this case goes to court and he gets deposed. I think it not just, but it, it matters in the sense there's obviously political stakes. I also think it's captivating to people because, you know, we all find the, pu the private lives of these public officials incredibly fascinating. And in Donald Trump's case, um, the notion that he's sleeping with a porn star and telling her that she reminds him of his daughter has kind of a car crash quality to it that you can't look away from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it is Shakespearean level drama. I believe there was actually an act in Hamlet where Hamlet is asked whether he used a condom or not, right? Yeah, I think it is. That's yeah. facetious, everyone out mm -hmm. there. That is mm -hmm. not actually part of Hamlet. <laughs> Just want to put a fine point on that. Yeah, I think it was to cap the D or not to cap the D. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're or, Stephen Colbert.
2018 midterms. People are talking about a blue wave. From your point of view, from what you see, is that overblown or is that a real thing? We're going to be out there with surfboards looking to see what color the wave is uh, for the circus this fall. I think it's interesting that the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Paul Ryan, um, who raises more money for Republicans than anyone, he's the third in the line of succession to the presidency, mm -hmm. It's May, no, it's March, right? We're in the March, month of March, March 29th. The election's like six months away. The Speaker of the House has not announced whether he's seeking re-election or not yeah. yet. And that's a really unusual thing. That, that he's, the, he's the guy who's supposed to be running the House of Representatives after Republicans retake control in the Republican theory. I think there's a lot of people in Washington looking at Paul Ryan and saying, that guy's not running for re-election because he knows that Republicans are going to lose the House of Representatives, and he's not going to want to be around in the minority. And he doesn't you, want to hand over the gavel in person. It's a yeah. heavy gavel. Well, and when you ask the question, is there a blue wave coming, you look at Paul Ryan and say, I think Paul Ryan sees a blue wave coming. And if Paul Ryan sees one coming, it might be coming. Everybody get their life raft. Yeah. All right. And, and, the, sur and the surfboard. So uh, when's the first episode of uh, the circus? April 15th, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Tax day. Yes, Yay. we timed it perfectly. Yeah, perfect. Well, thanks so much for being <laughs> Thank you, here. Thank you, John, good to see you again. <laughs> Season three of The Circus premieres Sunday, April 15th. Alex's new book, Future Face, is out that same week. John Holm and Alex Wagner, everybody, we'll be right back with a performance by Casey Musgraves.